Hello everyone, today's lesson is about organic chemistry. This is for IGCSE chemistry from the latest syllabus of 2023. What makes organic chemistry really simple is that it's the chemistry of the element carbon. All the compounds we study in this topic contain carbon and they're all somehow extracted from crude oil. Crude oil is actually a mixture of many different components. Generally speaking, they're all hydrocarbons. Now, the term hydrocarbon is one important definition for your IGCSE exam. It's a compound made up of carbon, hydrogen only. So the only part here is an essential part of this definition. But the question is, how do we separate the crude oil into all of its components? We're going to be using a process known as fractional distillation. During fractional distillation of crude oil, we heat up the crude oil at a very high temperature until it evaporates. And then we stop separating those fractions. The higher up in the column, then lower the boiling point. There's an important relationship here. If you go up inside the fractionating column, the temperature decreases and so is the number of carbons. So those hydrocarbons you have at the top of the column are the ones with the lowest boiling point. Actually, the first four hydrocarbons are all gases. That's because they have low boiling point. In the IGCSE exam, you need to tell the position of the fraction and you need to tell its function or its use. Now, let's start at the bottom. The lowest fraction is bitumen. Bitumen has the highest boiling point and it's the stickiest among all of these fractions. The next fraction is lubricating oil. Lubricating oil has lower boiling point than bitumen and is used as a lubricant. Starting from here, the fractions are becoming fuels. So we have the fuel oil. The fuel oil is usually used for boats and we have diesel. Diesel is used for large trucks. We're going to go further up in the column. So now we have kerosene for airplanes. We have naphtha, which is a chemical solvent. Then we have gasoline for cars. And finally, we have refinery or natural gas, which is the gas we use for cooking. We're now going to look at one type of hydrocarbons. These are known as alkanes. Alkanes are good fuels, but they are chemically unreactive. For that reason, if you want an alkane to react, you must somehow supply energy for this reaction to happen. For reactions of alkanes, we usually supply ultraviolet radiation for them to react with chemicals such as halogens. Right here, we have the reaction of methane with chlorine. This is a typical substitution reaction. It's a substitution reaction because we take off a hydrogen from the hydrocarbon. Here I have methane and we sub it with an element such as chlorine. So we end up with two products here. One product is going to be what we call the halogenoalkane or chloromethane in this case. That's a chlorine attached to a hydrocarbon. And we have hydrogen chloride gas. I'm going to show you another substitution reaction. This time it's methane with bromine, which is another halogen. So in this case, again, we take off a hydrogen from the methane and we sub it with a bromine atom. So we end up with bromomethane this time and hydrogen bromide. I will show you this reaction in real time. So if you take a flask of an alkane with bromine, at the beginning, we've noticed that the color of the flask is quite brown. That's the color of bromine gas. But when you expose the flask to UV light, you would notice that the brown color fades and you would start to notice that there's a gas giving off. Now, if you could test this gas with the litmus paper, you would notice that the litmus paper turns red. That's a sign of acidic gas. The acidic gas is hydrogen bromide. As I told you earlier, alkanes are good fuels, but not all of them. The long alkanes, the ones with many, many carbons like bitumen, are not really good as fuels, but we can somehow turn them into fuels that can be used for engines by means of a process known as cracking. Cracking is simple when you break down long alkane with the use of heat and catalyst and turn them into far more useful alkenes, short alkenes, and hydrogen. Cracking reactions are important for your exam, so let's practice one cracking reaction. I have C10H22, which is like a long alkane. I'm going to break it down into two products. I usually write C2H4 as my first product, which is an alkene, and then I subtract that C2H4 from the original alkene from C10H22, and I will get my other alkene, which is going to be, in this case, C8H18. It's also possible to get hydrogen as your product of cracking, which is another important product in this case. Cracking reactions are quite important at a practical, so you need to be able to set up the cracking reaction in a school lab. So you would need first cotton wool, soak that cotton wool with the long alkane. You also need a catalyst, such as aluminum oxide. Put both in a test tube and apply heat on both the catalyst and the alkane. Then you will collect your products, the short alkane. You would collect them underwater. Why we collect them underwater anyways? That's because neither is soluble in water. Finally, you can prove that you've collected those alkanes and alkenes by doing a simple flame test, because both of which are flammable. 